Today's video is all about gaps, specifically gap fills. We had a gap inside of the S&P 500, and I want to show you how to build your very own gap scan inside of Thinkorswim. For all of our Volatility Box members, this is going to be especially useful as we release some of the important updates over the next few weeks. Now, first things first, let's understand what is a gap. This was Friday's close, and if we take a look at where we opened with our overnight activity, you can very easily see this gap. This is Friday's close, and this is Sunday's open. This is the S&P 500, which opens on Sunday with the futures markets. Now, we have this massive wide gap here, and that's what we're looking to scan for in today's video. How do we find places like this where we have an open gap inside of Thinkorswim? Now, this is a simple scan. It's a one-liner, but again, it's going to be very useful, especially for all of our Volatility Box members. Now, first things first, I'm going to start by going to the Scan tab, and I have a few basic filters loaded in. The first one is All Optionable, so I want to find all stocks which have options available, and I'm removing all futures, so I'm saying Exclude All Futures, and this way we get to focus on just the stocks and ETFs. Now I'll click Add Filter, and here I'm going to select Study. Inside a study, I'll select Custom, and that pulls up this Custom Study Filter. Now if you're trying to follow along in paper money, you won't be able to. Custom Study Filters are only supported in the live version of Thinkorswim. Now if we start by first describing what a gap is in layman's terms, a gap is simply where today or the current day's open is sizably different than yesterday's close. Now, whatever that threshold is, 1%, 2%, 3%, you can decide that. That's what we call the gap, but you can decide the threshold as long as that threshold is met, and you could say we have, in essence, an open gap. So we need to be able to not only have this threshold, something that the user can easily change at the top, but we need to then be building the logic to compare yesterday's close to today's open. Now, this can be done in a simple one-line scan where we can say something like plot signal. So this is the variable we want Thinkorswim to scan for. And we're going to say, okay, let's compare yesterday's closing price to today's open price. So we're going to take yesterday's close, subtract that from today's open, and we'll divide that from yesterday's closing price. Now, this will give us some sort of a decimal value. Now we need to make sure we get the absolute value of this initial difference so we can account for both gap ups and gap downs. The way we can do that, we just wrap this inside of an absolute value function. This is a built-in function inside of Thinkorswim, which then takes the absolute value of yesterday's close minus today's open. So now we've taken care of both the positive and the negative numbers for positive and negative gaps. We've calculated what this number is, but as of right now, we're simply just returning that calculation. We need to return only whenever this calculation exceeds our threshold. So the way we can do that is by adding a greater than check. And if you want it greater than or equal to, say greater than or equal to, and I'll add in that threshold variable. Now I've set this to the daily time frame. So let's go ahead and run the scan. Now we can see we have 93 different symbols. These are 93 symbols inside of the all optionable list excluding futures in which we had a gap today of at least 5% or greater. Now let's take a look at one of these to see is this scan working the way we would expect. I'm going to filter by volume and we'll use Skechers here at the very top. I'll load in a chart of Skechers, switch to the daily time frame, and we can very easily see this gap in today's price activity. Now this gap is, of course, well above our 5% threshold, up more than 24% today. Now let's reduce this gap percentage from 5% to, let's say, maybe 3%. Let's see if we get some more recognizable names. Now we have 286 stocks. We take a look. We have HIMS at the very top. Let's go into HIMS and let's see if we did have at least a 3% gap. So we're comparing yesterday's close to today's opening price. And we can see that that move today was 3.58%, meets our threshold of being at least 3%, and that's why we see it appearing on our charts. All of this overnight activity that leads to the gaps that you see on the end-of-day time frame charts, that's what the scan is looking for. 
So now you have a very quick, easy way to scan for gaps. You can change this threshold for whatever that threshold is. Depending on the market volatility, you may need to adjust this up or down, but you have a way to scan for gaps. Now for all volatility box members, these gap fills are going to be especially important as I release some of the new models and some of the new updates. I hope you found this video helpful in understanding how to scan for gaps inside of Thinkorswim. Again, a very simple scan, a quick recap. We created a threshold variable. This is the minimum percentage that you want for your gap. And then we simply just took the absolute value of yesterday's close minus today's open, divided that by yesterday's close and compared that to our threshold to see where is the absolute value of the difference between yesterday's price and today's price greater than our threshold to tell us where do we have an open gap. Now you can of course build on this scan and start to look for things like gap fills or take this gap, combine it with other triggers like the RSI to know where is this gap likely to get filled. In all of this, the first step is identifying where do we have an open gap. Take care and I'll see you in our next update.